So, um, this is, I've just done the bearing replacement on this uh, little Shoblin 102. It is the uh, two-speed, the, the back gear model headstock, and it has a uh, taper mount roller bearing in the front, which there's some tricks to, to replace, uh, as I've learned, and eventually got a really good result out of it. When I first reassembled the spindle, following the uh, somewhat complex methodology for getting the right fit on the bearing. Uh, I had about three tenths play on the spindle. From lifting this up to pressing it down there was three tenths. And that, that just means that the, the, I've done a poor job of it. That the rollers uh, inside of the that the rollers inside of the uh, race have three tenths clearance. So they're just going to slop around and you'll get rapid wear and won't get accuracy and it just is sort of a fail from trying to install a very, very precise bearing. What you want is no clearance or even some negative clearance, some, some preload of Micron or so. I strove for <coughs> no clearance and we're talking Microns here. Um, so it's some challenging work, but you can see now I lift up on the spindle and I can't move that indicator needle a quarter of a tenth. It's not moving at all and I press down and it's not moving. So there's no slop, That's, that roller bearings in there are extremely well supported right now by the race and it just fit the way it's supposed to. And if I go to check for run out, if I rotate this, try to do this at kind of a constant speed. Now it moves initially as, as there's some drag in the indicator and uh, the, the sort of the train in the indicator has to kind of take up any slack in it. Once I kind of work through that, you can see I'm rotating here and I'm not getting a quarter of a tenth. As I go around there, it's just phenomenally perfect. <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. So there's just no run out there. That's as good or better than factory specs as uh, as it should be with an expensive bearing put into something made by Schoblin. Um, yeah, happy with that. My uh, 75 or 80 year old lathe is as good as the day it came out of the Schoblin plant. At least the headstock will. The headstock is, so I can get the rest of it, but it's going to be a little more work to get the rest of it to the same state. In any event, uh, that's... That's something to be happy about. Absolute perfection. And you can see that indicator needle is at about 3, so it's, it's in the middle of its range, so it's not like it's bottomed out or anything. There's just no run out there. This is a really great indicator. It's a compact, which I don't believe they exist anymore. They were absorbed into uh, Interrapid. But it's a tense indicator, and look at how far apart the graduations are. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Starrett 199 Master Precision level. There's other levels that measure to the same precision, but the graduation lines on the Starrett's are so far apart. I'd argue it's it's quite a bit more accurate because it's easy to interpolate between the graduation marks. Well, same thing here. Those tenth graduation marks are not all bunched up, so it's pretty doable to see if there's a half a tenth or a quarter tenth run out. And there's just not. I think it's just perfect. And no, you know, no, I can't move that by putting a force on it up or down. So, pretty happy with that. On to the next project. Thanks for tuning in.